Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a quick little tutorial on how to print barcodes using a Dymo label printer with SKUs generated from Square. You use the SKUs to create barcodes and then you use the Dymo printer to print the labels. So it's a really cool, free, easy to use, well, semi easy to use tool that Square, pro Square provides. Um, it took me a little bit of research to figure out how to take the actual SKU to create the barcode and not have to download and go to all these different websites. So I hope that you find this useful, but it is specifically for using Square's SKUs to generate barcodes in the Dymo label software. So I hope you find it helpful. All right, so we are going to use Square to make some barcodes. Now this is a recently discovered situation. I had no idea about this. And so I went through many iterations of tagging items and having little tiny white price tags hanging from all my bags and they would inevitably get all tied up. And there, it was just a challenge. But somebody posted in one of the vending groups that I'm in on Facebook that you can populate free SKU numbers and use those SKUs to create barcodes from Square. So I kind of started investigating it and I figured it out and it took me several hours to really hone in, but now I've got it figured out. And so you can see that this is a scannable barcode and I'm able to put some information on it that helps the shopper know exactly what they're getting. So like on this one, you could, this is a bifold wallet, but it also has RFID and the cost is 52. And then this one is a bifold wallet and the cost is 47. So this is really fun. Now these cards have information about court, how to take care of it, and then has all my contact info. And this goes in every single item that I sell. So I thought that it would be smart to put it on this tag. As you can see, they're a little bit wide, but what that does is it allows it to be peeled off if it's a gift, which I like. Um, this is the smallest size tag that I could find that would fit an actual barcode. So, you know, you work with what you can. So the printer that I am using is a Dymo Label Writer 4XL. I bought my printer in 2018 and I paid $177 for it. I did a quick search and they are definitely more expensive now. They're around the $300 price range, but I cannot explain how much of a lifesaver this printer really is. And then this is my first foray into different label sizes, but you can do all different types of labels with it and it prints quick. There's no ink or toner. It's a thermal printer, so you never run out. Um, it just really, really is a game changer. And with Dymo, whenever you purchased, whenever you purchase a printer, you do the Dymo label install. And this is where you can figure out or you can create all different types of labels. So they have all these different presets with the prices or the, the sizes here underneath so you know exactly how big they are. And so you can go in and design exactly what you want it to look like. And then you just print it directly to the printer. And it really is a game changer. They are expensive, but highly worth it. So for my price tags, I got the smallest tags that I could get that would still fit a barcode. So they ended up being two and a quarter wide by one inch tall. And what you do is you open up the Dymo label software and what I want to do is I want to find this specific label. So I'm going to go to this drop down. I'm going to go to multi-purpose label. And then you're just going to scroll until you find what you're looking for. So this happens to be the small size under multi-purpose. And so you click that and then you see it populates over here. So now what I want to do is I need to add the barcode and then I want to add the name and the cost of the item. So I'm going to go to insert. And then if you do here under label objects, there are several different things, address, text, counter, date and time, etc. And scroll down until you find barcode. So you're going to drag it over and then you see it populates just a generic barcode there. Now this is where you're going to grab the SKU information from Square. Click out of this stuff. So you're going to go to Square and we need to get our SKUs ready to go. So I'm going to go over here to items. This is my home page. I just logged into Square. I'm going to go to items. 
And another caveat that I need to point out is if you're just using regular Square, like the white logo um, on the app on your phone, you need to download Square for retail. And that is where you're going to find the option to make barcodes. If you're just using regular Square, you're not going to see this option. So Square for retail. Now, when you log in or when you when you download the app on your phone and you log into that Square for Retail interface, it's going to kind of change. It doesn't change. It still looks the exact same, but it's going to offer barcode printing. Now, if again, until you update to retail, it's not going to do it. Um, retail, you can pay for, but I did all of this on the free version. So if it tries to get you to pay, just say no. All right. So once you're here and you have all of your items loaded, you need to make sure that you have everything that you're selling on your table and you want to create an actual line item for it you can create all the variations do all that jazz once you have all of your items set up in square and you're ready to go you're going to go over here to where it says actions and click and then right here it says generate SKUs. so you click that button and i'm not going to because i've already done it for mine but when you click that button it's just going to go in and on the back end it's going to assign a SKU to every single item in your library and every single variation every single item is going to have a different SKU number now a detail about this is that if you sell wholesale to another shop or to a vendor your SKUs will not work for them these are only for your specific square interface so if you sell five wallets to sally sue at the shoe store and she wants to resell them, she's going to have to generate her own SKUs. So these are just for you, okay? So once you get your SKUs made, you're just gonna click on your first item that you need to make a barcode for. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down and you'll see right here that it has the name of the item, or it should, this one for some reason doesn't have a name right there, but I'll show you how to change that. So it has the name of the item. So here's RFID and then there's the automatically generated SKU and then the price that that barcode will bring up. If you want to, you can keep track of your stock by adding in how many you have in stock right there. So you can, there's so many tools in the Square interface. So if you need to change anything, say you misspelled something or you need to change the price, you just click on that category and then here it is. So this is my no RFID, so just my regular wallet. And then you would scroll down and put your price in. So this number right here, this SKU number is what we need in order to make our barcode. So what I like to do is I just like to copy it all. You can control C or right click and press copy. And then you need to go back to Dymo. Now this process of going back and forth and creating barcodes is laborious but only the first time, because once you have them in, you can save them and then you can just recall them every time for printing. So this is a pain in the butt, but I promise it's worth it. So you're back here. We've inserted our barcode onto our label and you can see it's got a highlighted square around it. What you're gonna do is double click that and it's gonna pull up this ob the object properties box. Right here, see where it says barcode data? You need to paste your SKU from Square into that box. And that's all that you do. You do not mess with anything else. Press OK. So it just told me to make mine bigger. So there we go. It automatically generated the barcode based on the SKU that I put into, oops, that I put into its information. I don't know what this text box is. There we go. So there is our scannable barcode. So now down here, I would say, okay, this is a non RFID bifold wallet. So I would just say bifold wallet. And then you can return down to create a new line in 47. Okay, so there we have our barcode ready to go. It's ready to be printed. Okay, so I had to plug in my printer, so I had to kind of angle. My cord is only so long. But so here, whenever your um, printer is plugged in, this button lights up, and this is where you can toggle how many copies of each label you need. So I'm just gonna print one for the basis of this demonstration. And so you print, you press the print button, and then it's gonna print over there out of my printer.
then you can see just prints out a perfectly perfect little barcode. So if you wanted to, you could change the font, you can edit what this looks like, you can make this bigger. I use railway font on all of my stuff on everything. So you can change it to railway, you can change the font um, or the size rather. You can manipulate this however you'd like. You can also change the font on the barcode numbers. So yeah, you can make it reflect however you want it to look. And so what you want to do, once you get the label created, you if you change anything and reprint, it's not gonna save this info. So we know that I wanna save this specific barcode so that I can recall it later and print it. So you're gonna go to file and then save as, and then you would type in the name and generally it populates whatever you type in there. And then if you press save, it's going to save it here. So I went back over to labels and then you go down to saved labels here. And then you can see all of my labels that I have for all of my products are here. And then if you want to get rid of one, you can just double click it and then press delete and it'll get rid of it. And then now if I need to print any new tags, so say for example, I have these three tall wallets that I need to print tags for. So I'm going to scroll through here until I find my tall wallet and here it is. So I have my regular tall wallet and then I have my tall wallet with RFID. None of these have RFID. So I'm going to print three of my regular. So you can see it pulled up my barcode. I'm going to toggle that to three, press print. And then here we go. My three labels all ready to be tagged and put into my wallet. Okay, so now what I need to do is I'm gonna take my tags that I have, and it just so works out that I have all this blank space up top, and then I just take my label, and I kind of do it at an angle, so that way the entire barcode fits nicely. You can do it straight across too, it's just easier to lay it quickly when you do it at an angle. So this took me a hundred years to go back through all of my stock. I had like 195 pieces that needed, they all needed to be tagged. So it took forever to go back and tag everything the other day. But now that it's tagged, it's going to make my life so much easier, especially when I have somebody helping me vend. So a lot of the times Brandon helps me vend or my mom will come and they understand my bookkeeping method. They, they can figure this out, but there's a lot of room for error here. So having everything now on barcodes, is just going to make it so, so much easier. So then once I get it ready to go, I just tuck that in. And then when customers find it, they get exactly what they need. And then when people are purchasing, I can show you how it works to scan. When people are purchasing, I'll just scan that barcode. So I'm going to open up, this is my iPad. Um, the only thing about square for retail, see here, it's the mint green color where a regular square is white. I don't think I have it on here, but regular square is a white logo, but you want the green one. The only thing is you can only be logged into one device with retail, whereas regular square, you can have, you know, 15 different iPhones all logged in, but with square for retail, you can only have one. So it looks a little bit different on the actual interface. The, the items are slightly different. The way that they have it laid out is not a list. Now it's like photos or the actual, you know, little code. But so you can still ring up stuff normally. You can say, okay, buy fold wallet. Um, okay, so regular buy fold wallet there. You would just click if it was RFID or regular and then add to cart, you can still do that normally, just like old Square. But now if you wanted to scan the barcode, Square for Retail has this little button right up here. It's a box within a box. You click that and what it does is it opens up a barcode scanner. And so you take your barcode 
and there you go. So you scan it and then you can see it added the item right there. Now say the, the SKU number was incorrect and it was actually an RFID wallet, you could just come in and click and save your changes. And then now you know that everything in here is correct. But yes, yeah, so you can just go through, you can scan everything in the order. And voila, there you go. So that's how it works on the actual Square interface. And then this you would just use like regular Square and check out as normal. Now, if you don't have an iPad to use for Square for Retail, that's totally fine. You can do all the same stuff on a regular iPhone. And it's actually a little bit easier to scan barcodes on an iPhone. But I'm going to try the iPad for this vending. This will be my first time. Um, that's Brandon's hand-me-down because he got a new one. And so I'm going to try to vend with the iPad this time. So that way, if I do a little walkabout and go shopping, my mom is still at the tent, then I don't have to leave my phone with her. So yeah, I will follow up and let you know how it all works out. But I'm really excited about the barcodes. And I think that it's a really great option that is not heavily published or talked about with Square. So I hope that you found this video useful. And yeah, leave me a comment, hit the like button, subscribe, all that jazz. And until next time, happy vending.